A Navy F-18 Super Hornet approaches an aircraft carrier through towering 40-foot waves. The deck pitches wildly up and down. One wrong move means death. The pilot has just seconds to catch a wire traveling at 150 miles per hour on a moving target the size of a postage stamp. This isn't a movie scene. This happened during Typhoon Cobra in 1972 when American pilots had no choice but to land in conditions that should have killed them all. Tonight, we reveal how our military pilots pull off the impossible, how cutting-edge American technology turns certain death into routine operations, and why these landings prove that the United States Navy remains the most advanced fighting force on Earth. The year was 1972. The USS Midway was stationed near Vietnam when weather radar detected something terrifying. A massive typhoon was heading straight for the carrier. But here's the problem. Multiple F-4 Phantoms, A-6 Intruders, and A-7 Corsairs were already airborne on combat missions. These pilots had to come home. There was nowhere else to land. If you're proud of our military's incredible skills, type PROUD in the comments below. Picture this scenario. You're flying a 30-ton fighter jet through hurricane force winds. Below you, an aircraft carrier is being tossed around like a toy boat. The flight deck is rising and falling by 15 feet every few seconds. You have one shot to catch a wire that's only 40 feet long. Miss it, and you either crash into the ocean or slam into the ship's superstructure. This is what our brave Navy pilots faced that night. The conditions were so brutal that flight deck crews were literally being thrown across the deck by the storm. Visibility was near zero. Rain was coming down in sheets. And yet every single aircraft made it safely aboard. How did they do it? The answer lies in American ingenuity and technology that was decades ahead of its time. Let's start with the most critical piece of equipment, something called the Improved Fresnel Lens Optical Landing System. Now, don't let the fancy name fool you. This device, nicknamed the Meatball, is pure genius wrapped in American engineering. It's basically a traffic light that saves lives. Here's how it works. The system creates a bright amber light that appears to move up and down as the pilot approaches. When the light sits perfectly between two green lights, the pilot knows he's on the correct glide path. Too high, and the amber ball moves up. Too low, and it drops down, warning the pilot he's about to hit the back of the ship. But here's where it gets really impressive. During rough seas, this system automatically compensates for the ship's movement. Advanced gyroscopes and motors adjust the light in real time, keeping it stable even when the carrier is pitching and rolling through massive waves. It's like having a steady reference point in the middle of chaos. During that 1972 typhoon, the optical system was being pushed to its absolute limits. The ship was moving so violently that the stabilizing motors couldn't keep up. When technology reaches its breaking point, that's when human skill takes over. This is where the landing signal officers come in, the unsung heroes of carrier aviation. These are experienced Navy pilots specially trained to guide aircraft during the most dangerous conditions. When the automated systems fail, these officers become the eyes and voice for pilots who can't see the deck through the storm. The LSO stands on a small platform just beside the landing area, completely exposed to the elements. During that typhoon, they were being soaked by massive waves washing over the deck, but they stayed at their posts, using radio calls to guide each pilot down through the storm. Their calm, confident voices were often the only thing standing between a successful landing and disaster. The technique they use is called a talk-down. It's almost like a rhythmic chant giving constant updates on the aircraft's position. You're looking good. A little low. Power, power. That's it. Looking good all the way. These simple words, delivered with absolute precision, guide 30-ton aircraft onto a deck that's moving like a wild bronco. But even the best human guidance means nothing without the right approach technique. Carrier landings are unlike anything in civilian aviation. Commercial pilots are trained to make smooth, gentle touchdowns. Navy pilots do the exact opposite. They literally fly their aircraft into the deck at full power. This seems crazy until you understand the physics. When a fighter jet catches an arresting wire, it goes from 150 miles per hour to zero in just two seconds. 
The stress on both the aircraft and pilot is enormous, but it's the only way to guarantee a safe landing on a short deck that's constantly moving. The arresting gear itself is another marvel of American engineering. Each wire can stop a 30-ton aircraft traveling at maximum speed. The system uses hydraulic cylinders and steel cables that can absorb incredible amounts of energy instantly. During rough seas, these systems have to work perfectly every single time. There's no room for mechanical failure. Now here's something most people don't realize. Modern aircraft carriers actually use two different stabilization modes depending on the sea conditions. In normal weather, the system stabilizes the glide path to a fixed point in space. But during storms, it switches to what's called inertial stabilization. This mode actually predicts how the deck will move and adjusts the landing guidance accordingly. Before we continue with this incredible story, I'd appreciate your support. If you're enjoying this content, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Most viewers watch without subscribing, but it really helps us create more content about our amazing military. Did you hit subscribe? The technology gets even more sophisticated. American carriers are equipped with something called the All-Weather Carrier Landing System. This system can actually land aircraft in zero visibility conditions. Complete darkness with no visual references whatsoever. Radar tracks the incoming aircraft and provides automatic guidance commands directly to the pilot's instruments. During that 1972 typhoon, this system was put to the ultimate test. Pilots couldn't see the carrier until they were almost touching down. The radar guidance brought them through the storm clouds and positioned them perfectly for landing, even when human eyes were useless. But technology alone doesn't explain how all those aircraft made it safely aboard. The real secret lies in the training our Navy pilots receive. These men and women spend months learning to land on carriers in perfect conditions before they ever attempt a night or weather landing. The training is intense beyond imagination. Pilots practice hundreds of landings on shore-based facilities that simulate carrier conditions. They learn to ignore their natural instincts and trust their instruments completely. By the time they're qualified for night and weather operations, landing on a moving deck becomes second nature. Here's something that demonstrates just how difficult this really is. The Navy considers a carrier landing to be a controlled crash. Every landing is graded, and even experienced pilots are constantly working to improve their scores. In rough weather, the difficulty level increases exponentially. During storms, pilots have to deal with multiple challenges simultaneously. Wind gusts can suddenly push the aircraft off course. Turbulence from the ship's superstructure creates dangerous air currents. Rain can obscure the pilot's vision at the critical moment of touchdown. And through it all, the deck is constantly moving in three dimensions. The physical demands on pilots during storm landings are extreme. The human body experiences tremendous stress during the sudden deceleration of a carrier landing. In rough seas, this stress is multiplied as pilots fight to control their aircraft through turbulent air while concentrating on hitting a target the size of a tennis court. What makes American carrier operations truly exceptional is the level of coordination required. Every landing involves dozens of people working together with split-second timing. Air traffic controllers guide the aircraft into position. Catapult crews prepare for immediate launch if the pilot has to abort the landing. Medical teams stand ready for emergencies. Firefighters are positioned to respond instantly to any accident. The crew coordination during that 1972 typhoon was flawless. Despite hurricane conditions that made normal work impossible, every person performed their job perfectly. Aircraft were guided aboard, secured against the storm, and prepared for the next mission. This level of professionalism under extreme conditions is what sets the American military apart. Modern carriers have even more advanced systems. The newest Ford-class carriers use electromagnetic catapults instead of steam, providing more precise control during launches. The landing systems have been upgraded with fiber optic technology that provides sharper, clearer guidance signals. Computer systems now monitor every aspect of flight operations in real time. But perhaps the most impressive advancement is in pilot training. Modern simulators can recreate storm conditions so accurately that pilots can practice emergency landings hundreds of times before facing the real thing. 
Virtual reality systems allow pilots to experience night landings in rough seas without leaving the ground. The confidence this training provides cannot be overstated. When pilots know they've successfully completed similar landings dozens of times in simulation, they approach real storm conditions with the right mindset. Fear becomes focus. Panic becomes precision. Here's a detail that shows just how refined these operations have become. Modern carriers can adjust their course and speed to minimize deck motion during critical landing sequences. The ship's captain works closely with the air operations team to provide the most stable platform possible for incoming aircraft. During severe weather, carriers will actually change course to position themselves optimally relative to the wind and waves. This might seem simple, but coordinating a 100,000-ton ship's movement with aircraft operations requires incredible skill and experience. The safety record of American carrier aviation is remarkable considering the extreme conditions involved. Thousands of storm landings have been completed successfully over the decades. Each success builds on lessons learned from previous operations, constantly improving techniques and technology. Today's carrier pilots benefit from decades of experience and technological advancement. The systems they use represent the absolute pinnacle of aviation technology. Every component, from the landing guidance systems to the arresting gear, has been refined through years of operational use and continuous improvement. The men and women who perform these operations represent the best of American military aviation. They volunteer for duty that most people would consider impossible. They train constantly to maintain skills that could mean the difference between life and death. And they do it all in service to our nation's defense. When you see footage of carrier operations during rough weather, remember that you're witnessing capabilities that exist nowhere else in the world. The combination of American technology, training, and courage creates possibilities that other nations can only dream of achieving. These storm landings prove something important about American military power. It's not just about having the most advanced equipment or the biggest ships. It's about the dedication to perfect every detail, to train for every contingency, and to never accept impossible as an answer. The legacy of that 1972 typhoon continues today. Every storm landing that follows builds on the courage and skill demonstrated that night. The pilots who guided their aircraft through hurricane conditions set a standard that continues to inspire naval aviators decades later. Our Navy's ability to operate in conditions that would ground other air forces gives America unique strategic advantages. When weather creates chaos for our enemies, American carriers continue normal operations. This capability has been decisive in conflicts around the world. The technology and techniques developed for storm landings have applications beyond military aviation. Lessons learned from carrier operations have improved civilian aircraft design, air traffic control systems, and pilot training programs worldwide. But at its core, the story of storm landings is about the people who make them possible. The pilots who fly through hurricanes to protect their shipmates. The deck crews who work in dangerous conditions to guide aircraft safely aboard. The engineers who design systems that work when everything else fails. These individuals represent the very best of American military service. They accept responsibility for operations that demand perfection under the worst possible conditions. Their success keeps our carriers operational when our nation needs them most. The next time you hear about American military capabilities, remember these storm landings. They represent something unique in military history, the ability to project air power anywhere in the world, regardless of weather conditions. This capability exists because of American innovation, determination, and courage. Conclusion. The sight of an F-18 Super Hornet catching the wire during a storm remains one of the most impressive demonstrations of human skill and American technology working together. These operations continue every day in all weather conditions, wherever American interests require protection. Our Navy pilots don't just land on carriers during storms because they have to. They do it because they can because America has invested in the technology, training, and people necessary to make the impossible routine. Because when the world becomes dangerous, someone has to be ready to respond. If this content helped you understand the incredible capabilities of our military, please like this video and subscribe for more stories about American military excellence. 
These men and women deserve recognition for their extraordinary service to our nation.